in view of the bad use to which the government has put the public money, I shall take steps to remove it from circulation. Signed, Diabolic. <laughs> Diabolic was created in 1962 by two sisters, Angela and Luciana Giciana. He appeared in Italian Fumetti's adult comics. He's not the prototypical superhero because he's a thief. When the character started, he was essentially a villain, robbing from pretty much anyone. Later, that edge was softened when he began to only steal from wealthy criminals. This Robin Hood type slant made him a bit more heroic. I'm still an outsider and an anti-hero, but someone you could more easily root for. In 1968, the character was adapted to the screen by producer Dino De Laurentiis. The film would be directed by Mario Bava. To bring Diabolic to the screen, Bava would be given the biggest budget he had ever worked with before, $3 million. However, after being so accustomed to working with such lower budgets in his career, Bava found the excessive money stifled his creativity and ended up bringing the film in for $400,000. Despite not taking advantage of the extra money allowed to him, the film is a fun, cool, sexy ride. A pretty groovy 60s action film that might be unbelievable, but is always fun. John Philip Law stars as Diabolic. His motives for his criminal acts never are very clear. Apparently only his love for Eva Kent, his accomplice and lover, and giving her as many treasures as he can get his hands on, is pretty much it. Marissa Mel plays Eva, and she is pretty smoking. I mean, I would take her over having any boy wonder sidekick any day. Diabolic steals and kills without any kind of remorse, anything to get to his objective. He targets government buildings, kills police, and anyone who stands in his way. His escalating criminal acts crush the economy and the government falls in chaos. But Diabolic doesn't have any intention of letting up. Diabolic is pursued by Inspector Ginkgo. His attempts to catch him are constantly coming undone. With mounting pressure from his bosses, Ginkgo becomes obsessed with Diabolic's capture, trying to anticipate his every move and take every precaution against him. Meanwhile, Valmont, a powerful criminal boss, has his own agenda for Diabolic. The setting of the film is somewhat vague. The character originated in Italy, but the cast is a mix of actors from differing backgrounds, and the locations make it appear that it is just a heightened, alternate European reality. Bava infuses the film with quite a few impressive mat shots. Simple effects that work so well that they're even more impressive considering the smaller budget he was working with. A lot of the camera techniques, compositions, editing, and mat shots are pretty impressive. There's a real visual style that makes the film really stand apart from so many others that were being made at the time. It all gives the film a much more fast-paced and interesting aura about it. Okay, there are some pretty lousy looking blue screening effects. I mean, some are pretty laughable. But I think they're just minor quibbles and 
they don't hurt the overall film. I mean, I would rather take a film with a fun, engaging story and crappy effects over a film that only has great effects going for it any day. The film is accompanied by a unique score by legendary film composer Ennio Morricone, and it really fits in and complements the action on screen. Some feel it's one of his best scores ever. Unfortunately, the original masters of it were destroyed in the fire, which explains the lack of any soundtrack re-releases. The cast is all pretty good. John Philip Law has a cool look about him. He's a bit wooden at times, but still isn't bad. He's plenty effective when he jumps into action. Marissa Mel, like I said, is really hot and looks great in her 60s outfits. She adds a very sexy quality to the film. The camera lingers on her, not shying away from her attributes. Actually, a lot of the film is photographed in a sexy, luxurious way. I suppose you could try to pick out some phallic imagery and all that, but uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. Unlike Batman, where it epitomized the goofiness of the 1960s, Diabolic is completely on the opposite side of the spectrum. It's comic booky and a bit extravagant, but never laughs at itself. Unlike the Batman show, Diabolic presents itself in a more serious vein. The characters aren't literal walking jokes to be laughed at as they were portrayed in Batman. Diabolic is more to be laughed with. The characters and situations are overblown, but not presented in a comical way. This is a presentation of the 60s that's cool, erotic, and bordering on the absurd, but accepting it's all just exaggerated fun. Having been so impressed with Baba's work on Diabolic, and realizing he had only spent 400000 out of the $3 million budget, De Laurentiis asked him to make a follow-up film to it. However, he was completely unhappy with the collaboration and just refused. You can still find the ripples of this film. The Austin Power films clearly had it in mind. The Beastie Boys inserted themselves into scenes from the film in their video for Body Movement. The 2001 film, CQ, centers around a film being shot during the same 1960s Euro cinema setting Diabolic was shot in. Diabolic is clearly an influence right down to John Philip Law co-starring in it. Tim Burton and Quentin Tarantino have cited Mario Bava as a major influence. And someone pointed out to me recently in Pretty Woman, Julia Roberts looks somewhat similar to Eva Kent when she was dressed as a hooker. Coincidence? A stretch? Hmm. There's a great documentary entitled Danger Diabolic, from Fometti to Film, on the DVD. It's definitely worth checking out. On the final episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, the last film to be featured was... Yep, Danger Diabolic. I don't think it really warrants a roasting like that, although the robots did have a few good jokes they threw at it. This is one lesser-known film that doesn't get as much attention as I think it deserves, but it seems to have garnered a small cult following over the years. I think if comic or superhero or just general film fans watch it, they would find it a nice surprise. Tough luck, diabolic.